and welcome back to ESO Live. Um, I'm something just happened off screen. Something happened. Please ignore. <laughs> Nothing to see I'm here. I'm Jessica Folsom. I am one of the ESO community managers. <laughs> this is Gina Bruno. I'm Gina. Um, one of the other community managers for ESO. So we have a great show lined up for you today. We're going to get into some news and week in review and then hop right into introducing you to the warden. So let's go ahead and hop into what's been going on for the last week and what's I happening next week. I thought we were going to do this. Well, we'll go over the show plan, I guess. We should go over the show plan first. <laughs> so welcome to today's show. <laughs> um, it's funny. CJ always makes these for us. and. Uh, We've totally just trapped him right on the TriCaster. <laughs> He's changed. It's, it's kind of like those fortune cookies that say, like, help me, I'm stuck in a fortune cookie factory or <laughs> anyway, not funny. <laughs> Moving on. Um, so, yeah, after we kind of do a very brief week in review, we're going to start getting into our first of two warden showcases. So today we're going to be focusing on how the warden was designed. Um, how you might play the warden in different types of roles, and then details on the animal companion skill line, which is what you guys chose to yep. see first. We had a poll on Twitter, and that's the one you guys voted on. We will dive into the other two skill lines in depth on our next DSO Live. Correct. And we will have a giveaway sometime later in the show. Stay so tuned. So stick around. It's going to happen. <laughs> so first piece of news, um, the most urgent Today, the home decoration contest is ending at midnight Eastern time. I don't know if I can do this the whole show. <laughs> so make sure um, you get your entries in. <laughs> so I can't even move my head. So. You can get to the entry form uh, on our Facebook page, or we also have an article on elderscrollsonline.com uh, about the home decoration contest. And you can link to the entry form from there. Correct. Um, you can also enter using... <laughs> really, using Twitter or Instagram, using hashtag ESO home decoration, that will get you an entry. Um, just so you guys know, there was kind of a little flub for the entries at first where you would enter, but then you wouldn't actually see anything on the submissions page. So we fixed that. All we were entries, getting your entries. We were getting them. You can look at them all now if you look at the, um, if you go to the entry form, there's a little tab at the top that says view submissions. So it's working. And no boy, worries. have we gotten a lot of good entries. Oh my gosh. We'd actually like to take a look at a couple of them. These are some that um, the studio was just looking at today and going, wowie wow. Um, this was submitted for the Fantastical Constructs category. It's a whole damn ship. <laughs> like somebody very, built a ship. <laughs> very Goonies vibe. <laughs> and we also have Molek Ball himself, made this out of rocks. Is <laughs> amazing. Look at the little people to scale. Like, those are actual players. On the floating rocks, yes. I see. Yes. And on his hand. <laughs> He's about to eat them. This was actually made on, I think, PS4. What? Which wow. I, I can't. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so continuing the fun, we've had the Jester's Festival event going on for the past a little over a week. Mm -hmm. um, that is actually ending on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So you still have a little bit more time to get your achievements and rewards. And be silly. Mm-hmm and enjoy the double XP, but the double XP doesn't end there. We're actually kicking off the ESO three year anniversary event also at 10 a.m. on years. Tuesday. Yep. Can you believe it? So look for more information on that event on uh, Monday. We'll have an article going up with all the details. Chef Donalyn is making a return, but there's actually some additional stuff that um, the event brings with it. You'll have to look at, look at the uh, article for it. But Double XP will be back. Delicious cake is coming back yep. too, which is funny because we were just talking about cake and chat before the show started. So <laughs> just comes around full circle. <laughs> didn't uh, didn't something else happen today? Yeah, something kind of funny. Yes, and the broom and bucket. We've seen you all posting your pictures of these, and we've really enjoyed them. Everybody has taken the broom and bucket challenge to heart. This actually kind of started out as a bit of a joke, and. Uh, well, you guys are taking it seriously, and we yeah. love it. Um, yeah, now people are like, all right, well, we'll just run a dungeon, and okay, With the broom and fun. bucket. <laughs> so this is something that's in the crown store. It's They're each 50 crowns. Um, they are an actual weapon and helmet. You can fight fun. with it, yep. And they're available Whack until, with the broom. Uh, I want to say it's April 3rd around 10 a.m. as well. So I think you're get right. them while you can. Indeed. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, looking ahead also on next week, Monday morning, we have a PC incremental patch. 
Um, it's going to be somewhat small, but not quite as small as last time. Uh, so this time we have a few fixes going in. It includes um, a fix for the volatile familiar. Um, there is an issue where um, ranks one through three of that ability, um, the pulse damage was actually being increased by Daedric Prey from other players. So we're going to be fixing that. Um, Halalu Furnisher's document, there were some rare issues where sometimes it would just be empty. That wasn't intended, so we're going to be fixing that. Um, also an issue with the Maelstrom Destruction Staff. Um, sometimes it just wouldn't function in some situations, so we have a fix going in for that. Also a few things for UI, Mauve Lorcage. Um, so we'll be posting those Monday morning as usual during maintenance, so keep an eye out. And then also the Crown Star Showcase. We know some of you have been asking when's the April Showcase going to show up. We do have that going up Tuesday as well. Everything's happening on Tuesday. It's not even <laughs> April yet. It's going to happen. We have some cool things going up. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, what else? Oh, the three-year anniversary, as just touched on, mm -hmm. that is happening next week. Um, we really would love to see screenshots or videos yeah. or anything that you might have um, back when we launched in 2014 or even when you joined the game just to kind Your of show off like memories. yeah here's the first time i was in the world of tamriel and look at my awesome screenshot or little videos or whatever you have that would be kind of cool to see so share those with us on twitter or facebook or even on the forums and we'd love to see it yeah, or instagram and then lastly Battlegrounds? Battlegrounds. Um, this was sort of our Battlegrounds month, mm -hmm. sort of a March Madness, if you will, but with Battlegrounds, um, we had a lot of articles going up on our website talking about um, the three different maps and the rule sets. Uh, there was a video that we released recently from PAX that you should take a look at. And as we're sort of wrapping up our Battlegrounds month, we're going to start heading into the Warden. So we have a lot of articles planned for April, including like an introduction to the Warden and showing you the skill lines and mm -hmm. all sorts of really cool stuff. And today's ESO Live and the next one. Yep, we are going to kind of kick off the whole Warden chat with the show today. Um, we're gonna be joined by our lead gameplay designer, Eric Robel and associate designer, Carrie Day, who worked on the Warden a lot. Yes. So, so let's switch over to say hello to them. Hello. Hi, guys. Well and done. And look at this. They've got their so buckets and brooms. festive. We're ready for the challenge. <laughs> They're taking. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, where did everything go? You should just talk like that the whole show. It'll be <laughs> fine. Oh, God. <laughs> He's like, please, no. So welcome, guys. Why don't you tell us, uh, for anybody who doesn't know you too, um, what you do at Sauce. Uh, on the combat team, we do a lot, actually. Um, so, of course, new classes, like the Warden. Uh, we're always looking at balance and you know trying to tune and tweak things. And then we also get to do the itemization and uh, progression types of activities as well, like the, the champion system and other progression systems. So. Do you run up and down the hallways with your brooms just beating each other? Well, someone's got to keep the floors clean around here. <laughs> small one for quick agility passes so <laughs> that's good that's good he's got the two-handed and you've got the one i got the dagger i guess <laughs> yeah if we fight she has a serious advantage with the the late close, close combat one <laughs> um so carrie you're relatively new to the studio and you've been focusing on the warden right yeah so i've done a, a lot of the implementation of the creation of the abilities themselves working with the animation team visual effects teams and sound effects and building making sure the whole thing comes together so the warden is kind of your baby yeah i love it a lot it's a lot of fun <laughs> Maybe your favorite class? Maybe. You're not biased. Can though. you? I'm totally biased. <laughs> <laughs> so right. the the audio guy thought it would be really funny to put the mic in my hair, and he's like, "No, you sound you sound really great." And I it's just crisp and clean. There's great. no way I can do this for an hour. I'm sorry. <laughs> so while she's fixing that, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about how did you start out in the beginning? Brainstorming. Yeah. What was the new class that you wanted to add to ESO? Yeah, this was a really exciting opportunity for us in the Elder Scrolls world because there's a lot of, lot of choices, there's a lot of opportunities, and it's a very open system, right? Elder Scrolls is about exploration, and um, we looked at some of the classes in the, in the other games, and um, you know they, they didn't have a lot of abilities, right? It was more skill line based, mm -hmm. so there were a lot of possibilities within that scope, so we brainstormed a bunch of different types of classes in terms of like what would the visual 
the visuals look for different skill lines and then we actually got pretty detailed and actually planned out like okay this skill line will have all these abilities this skill line will have all these abilities and then you know we had a whole bunch of classes and we're like all right which one of these do we like the most which one feels the most appropriate um, not just for the Elder Scrolls universe um, in general but also specifically our game mm -hmm. and, and different too yeah yeah so one of the things we were looking at was some sort of like dark wizard kind of guy mm -hmm. um, and that was definitely a cool class right and you know and one of the most asked about too. Yeah, yeah yeah definitely yeah we were looking at community feedback as well of, of what kind of things people wanted to see mm -hmm. yeah um, there were a lot of threads and polls from people asking over the years what, what kind of class would you want to see if we were ever it was really funny one. reading mm -hmm. them as we were working on it yeah, every time those yeah. come up <laughs> yeah. on, on, on polls on Twitter, on the forums, on Reddit, every time they came up, we passed them around the studio and read them. And then once we actually had the warden sort of in design and we saw people like, man, we'd really love to have a warden type class, we were like, or ice. Class. Okay. Yeah, got <laughs> it. And like, check, done. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah, so, so and the, the dark wizard thing, um, it's definitely a cool idea and we like some of the abilities we came up with for it, but. Um, given sort of the breadth of classes that we already have. Mm -hmm. The sorcerer, he does lightning magic, but he's also summoning, you know, these Daedric creations. And then the Nightblade, with the color scheme he has of the the black with the red streaks in it, you know, he's kind of a little bit dark too. Mm -hmm. And the destruction staff. Yeah, yeah. so we wanted, we wanted something that was very, you know, different and unique so that players could, you know, sort of express themselves in this avenue mm -hmm. that we hadn't yet created. So that's why we went with the nature style theme. Um, okay. Because so, it, was, it was very different and new and fresh. We um we actually have a warden set up yep. on our development server right now. So we wanted to show you guys um, sort of what it looks like. Carrie's going to run through and um, give you a little look-see. And she'll be running through an area in Vardenfell. So you can kind of see some new stuff. Yep, but, um, so this is just a little bit north of Sadrith Mora, for anybody who's really curious. And again, this is the development server, so there might be, I don't know, some random, <laughs> random flying, flying person, dev going yeah. through or whatever, uh -huh. some oddities. But um, this is in a pretty final state right now, just the, the effects that are being shown and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, speaking of the effects, what, um, what was sort of the high-level direction for the visual effects for this class? Yeah, good question. Um, and one of the things um, we looked at once we had sort of the theme of a nature type of guy is mm -hmm. we're looking at the lore of Elder Scrolls and, you know, things that were similar to, to this type of, of um, class. And the, um, the spinner is something in previous games and, and actually, you know, there's some spinners in, in our game as well. Um, and they're, they're Bosmer and they're dedicated to the Green Pact. Mm -hmm. And these guys are storytellers and they're so um, persuasive in their stories that the the people that are listening are actually seeing the manifestations um, that they're talking about in the story, and they're very visual in these description, you know, and the, their motions and stuff like that to help mm -hmm. tell a very convincing tale. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, we, so that was sort of you know we we loosely based it off of that type of. Um, you know that that general idea yeah that that sort of yeah. lore and, and theory and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with the animations, <coughs> uh, we have very very detailed animations that have a lot of a lot of like personality. You know, like where every single like you know fidget finger digit you know is is flexed and stuff. Yeah. And you know they're like mm -hmm. sort of moving around and telling. Kind of a fluid. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and it was actually really great working with the the animation team on this. Um because they just kept cranking out new unique animations and we're like we're like you know if if you only give us like 3 i guess we can you know sort of like cobble together and make something that would work but like almost every single ability they ended up making a new That's one a brand for new animation. yeah cuz they're just they've just been really talented and they were able to like they we you know come up with a new idea for something and then like the next day it would be in and you were like oh my god this is crazy this is great um, so yeah, we're, we're really happy with, uh, <laughs> you know, you don't have to hold the broom the whole time if you don't want to. <laughs> uh, I figured I'd get a little, I just noticed you're still a little exercise it. in here while I was, uh, people are probably tuning in going, why is he holding the broom? <laughs> no reason. I can <laughs> here you go. I'm, I mean, if you just start talking nonsense, I'll just smack you in the head with it. <laughs> oh God. Why did I give her the broom? <laughs> this was a mistake. One? You need the agility one for quick. Yeah. <laughs> just the quick one. Just. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Um, 
so that that's sort of yeah sort of the, the animation side of it and then <coughs> sorry excuse me just don't uh, throw i mean we have a bucket in case oh. you need to, if you're gonna spew spew into this wow this is a very <laughs> name, that movie, guys. name the movie yeah no that's handy <laughs> So the, yeah, so basically we sort of break everything into the animations, which are, you know, the physical motions of the character and how they're, you know, animating and moving around. And then we have the, the visual effects, which are the different particles and the stuff are sw that are swirling around your character mm -hmm. or, you know, projectiles that shoot out, you know, from, you know, we got to like sync it up from your hand to hit the enemy in the right place and stuff like that. And every class in ESO has its own uh, color scheme for the abilities, or, or a couple colors. And the, yeah. It looks like the Warden also has its own. Yeah, so pretty much every ability, yeah, we kind of weave this teal element mm -hmm. um, into it. And even, you know, yeah, sort of regardless of what type of thing, if it's, you know, a plant or ice or whatever, you know, it all has at least some sort of swirl to help tie it all to one cohesive thing. So Teals when you and greens. Yeah, exactly. So when you see that, you know it's you're fighting against a warden. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, in addition to that, there's also the effects are just very unique and different looking from anything else. Um, because, yeah, you know, you're, you're <coughs> summoning all these different kinds of animals. And with the plants, they're, they're growing and they look very um, organic and natural, kind of like wild. Mm -hmm. So they have, you know, they'll be like twisting around in different, you know, interesting patterns and Nothing looks synthetic or man-made, right? It's all it's, has it's all a very feral, natural look. Yeah, exactly. Kind of kind of wild and stuff like that. Somebody in chat asked a really good question: If there's going to be warden NPCs that you fight, or oh, I guess warden enemies, that is a good question. Yeah, or if it's only player characters. Yeah, actually, we um, we work with the monster team, and we're like, here here are a bunch of the really cool abilities. You know, feel free to grab whatever you want, and they're like, yeah, all right, some awesome. Some of them there's... may show up in the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So you'll you'll see some familiar things, definitely. Great, neat. So when you guys were designing the Warden, what was uh, some of your high-level gameplay decisions or goals versus the other classes? Like, how does it differ compare and, and also work with the other classes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's, that's a good question. And um, we didn't want to add a, a mechanic that was specific to the Warden, mm -hmm. like an energy bar or a new resource, because we wanted the, in, the Warden to integrate with the current skill lines that we have. So we, <laughs> yeah, so like the warden can use any you know destruction staff ability. They can use two-handed abilities. They can use light armor abilities. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's kind of doesn't really necessarily fit fit with a specific class mechanic. Um, and just in Elder Scrolls in general, we you know are building a very open system where you can sort of mix and match abilities from different locations, and that way you know. If, if one of the warden abilities doesn't really match your play style, mm -hmm. you can supplement, you know, instead of using the warden ability, you know, you can use that two-handed ability or whatever it is. Cool. The, Carrie, what's that? This is one of the new uh, hive uh, golems that you're going to fight in Morrowind. It's, it is a brand new, unique monster along with Look at that his smaller counterpart wow. there. Um, he does swarm, or he does create kind of evil swarms and things like that around you. Oh, yeah, you put one right there on the ground, yeah, there's, right? Like, it's, it's hive, which is pretty cool. It's like the evil... Petra flies, which we'll talk about later, so you can see our teal ones are mm -hmm. like ours versus the enemies. So I'm just running around fighting some of the various monsters that you can encounter in Morrowind itself. Very cool. You know, something else that um, some of our viewers in chat were noticing were the mm -hmm. buff trackers on the screen. Oh. And that's something oh. new yeah, that's surprise. coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. surprise. Yeah, um, surprise. So yeah, that's coming in update 14. Um, it'll be. <laughs> It'll be on all platforms. It'll be in the base game, so everyone mm -hmm. will have access mm -hmm. to these. And one thing that we did is that if you get a buff category like Major Intellect or, or something like that, it's a unique icon, so it's consistent every time for all the abilities that you cast, which would give great. you those buff categories. Cool. And so then, especially, that's great for the Warden, because mm -hmm. if he, you know, he has a lot of group utility kind of things, so when he's casting a buff on you, you see the category, and you're like, oh, that's the same one my ability provides. I guess I don't need that on my ability anymore. Um, gotcha. Because that, that was one of the things with the Warden is we wanted him to be group focused. And we also had his abilities. Um, there's a number of them where there's kind of a delay to when you get the bonus. Um, and you can see that in each one of the trees, there's sort of some defining abilities where you fire it off and it doesn't necessarily like immediately stun the guy. Up. Yeah, but it builds up. And then when it hits the guy, it's really powerful and really mm -hmm. awesome. 
So that that's sort of how the warden is distinct from the other classes in terms of whether you're you know tanking, DPSing, or healing. Okay. Um, there, there's a you know a pretty good element to strategy in like you know I'm going to cast this ability now and then in a couple seconds. I'm going to be in the right position, or my allies are going to be in the right position to really take take advantage of this type of ability. But you can still effectively solo if you want. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, we kind of yeah designed it so that there would be something for everyone. Mm -hmm. So there's you know a lot of like straightforward abilities, and then there's more complex abilities as well. So sort of regardless of your playstyle, you get some of that. Um, and we we were looking at sort of the tools that every class had and what are the key things that classes require that, you know, we kind of think that every class has to have. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, the, the Major Resolve and Major Ward are these armor buffs that every class can get. And different classes have access to them, you know, in sort of some unique ways. Like the Nightblade, whenever he uses a shadow ability, uh, he gets he gets that bonus for a couple seconds, so he's like, you know, constantly kind of like coming in and out of the shadows and getting, getting mm -hmm. this defensive bonus where the Dragon Knight, you just cast the spiked armor, you know, you grow the thick spikes right. and then you're just good to go for a while. So we wanted to do, you know, a little different take on that so that we have the ice cloak ability where you can give this bonus to all your allies. So now everyone can sort of change up what abilities they're slotting and in a in a game where you only have, you know, five abilities mm -hmm. on your bar at a time, um, you know, being able to free up an extra slot is is a really cool bonus that mm -hmm. you can bring to groups. Yeah. Okay. So, um, kind of going into the abilities a little bit more, how did um, you and just um, the combat team determine how or which of the abilities go into each skill tree? Because mm -hmm. there's a lot, I mean, it's all new abilities for this guy. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Um, well, one of the, the key focuses off the bat is that we wanted to make it very easy for you to understand because people are sort of constantly changing and customizing their builds based on the situation they're in, mm -hmm. that they would be able to know where to go to do that. So the frost line is defensive, the animal companions is offense, and then the green balance is healing. So if you're like, oh, you know, I'm getting killed a lot, I need to sustain myself, you know exactly where to go mm -hmm. to look at that. And then you have, you know, within that skill line, there's a lot of different options, so you can kind of figure out the one that best suits you mm -hmm. or your play style. And for anybody who's just joining in, um, Carrie, one of our um, gameplay designers, is running through Vardenfell right now uh, with the new Warden class that's coming in ESO Morrowind. Um, this is Eric Robel, our lead combat designer. I'm just oh, chatting about Warden. <laughs> yeah, I wait. <laughs> My wait was a delay. <laughs> um, anyway, moving on. So, um, I'm so sorry, with, I totally interrupted you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so um, sorry, I do that a lot. <laughs> no, 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 no. Total, totally good. Um, so, yeah, there's these sort of, yeah, you know, predefined things of where to go um, and what to get. Um, so you guys looked at the abilities and you kind of determined which uh, skill line it would go in based on what the utility was, either mm -hmm. offense, defense, or healing? Yep. Um, and then within that, that construct, we do have a couple of surprises. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it'll be, it'll be straightforward, but then... Carrie's laughing. <laughs> as you... Uh, <laughs> so as you as you know you spend more time with it you know you can find some really interesting nuances and you're like oh cool i could actually go into the frost tree and you know find find an offensive ability there mm -hmm. um and then you know i can use like a frost app mm -hmm. and try to like, you know come up with some interesting damage builds so you probably want to put points into a couple of different skill lines or maybe all three depending on your desired build yeah, and usually just in general, since skill lines level up, mm -hmm. if you have an ability on your bar, um, we, we do recommend that you get that the first ability from each skill line, regardless of what class, when you're starting a new character, so you have that option and you're leveling those up. Yeah. We kind of put some of the abilities that were true to like Green Balance and Winner's Embrace and Animal Opinions at the top, so, and then as you go down, there might be more intermingling mm -hmm. and mixing and things like that mm -hmm. for those surprises. <laughs> <laughs> So how does the, uh, d the the Holy Trinity tank healer DPS, how is the Warden unique from the other classes in those roles? Like how did you guys go about saying, okay, this is how we want the Warden to approach healing? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I would say the key difference for all three of those roles actually is the the delayed effect on abilities, where you're with the, with the, the green balance, for example, it's like you're growing you know, and the, they're getting, you know, 
bigger and bigger the vines, you know, as, mm -hmm. as the ability is like blooming, and then poof, you get like a really big heal um, after that. Um, and then there's the Scorch ability mm -hmm. where um, it's sort of building up in power and building up in power, and then finally the oh. the shocks. Yeah, uh, Carrie's showing it right there on the screen. <laughs> the shocks all then you know explode out, and then there's explosion, and you do you know a huge amount of damage. Um, not just to a single target, but everything in front of you. So, so there's kind of a theme of letting things grow or build, yeah. and then having yeah. a big reward at the end. Yeah, exactly. We didn't want a, a skill line based on growing nature, and you, you know, plant a seed and then immediately harvest Instant, it. Instant, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so those types of abilities are, you know, that, that's obviously that's not every single ability, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we we sort of created a balance between, you know, there's some sort of simple, easy to use abilities. You know, you just mouse over the target and you hit it and it like does damage. And it's instant. So there are some instant. Yeah, yeah, abilities. exactly. So there's, you know, there, there's a little bit of everything. You know, there's something for all mm -hmm. different types of play styles. And we will be showing off all the abilities in the Animal Companion skill line, which is what we're talking about today. And we'll be showing that off very soon. All, like, all of them, including Like in morphs. today's show, not, uh -huh. not soon. And I'm but... only using Animal <laughs> Companion. Soon. soon. <laughs> TM. <laughs> you said the S word. Uh -oh. I know, uh -oh. but I really do mean soon this time, <laughs> I, uh, like in moments. <laughs> I'm only casting Animal Companion skill lines at the moment. Yep. Right. That's all you have on your bar. And That's we will show the bar. morphs also, so mm -hmm. we, we are getting into that, gosh, in probably 10 minutes or something. Yep. So. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so in terms of balancing the warden, I know everyone has a lot of questions about how we bring in a brand new class to an existing game that already has four classes. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to talk about how you do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have totally a easy, Good. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> just knock this off. We have um, sort of some targets that we've established for abilities in terms of like, this is how much damage a single target ability does, and this is how much cost and you know the average type of ability does, and then we'll have modifiers on top of that. So mm -hmm. you know if it does a stun, then we'll make it you know like do less damage or cost more or something like that. Um, so we compared. I think it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, you really zoomed yeah. in on that poison, so you yeah, get the full yeah, screen yeah, effect. The well, it's scary <laughs> when he like just leaps at you and lands on you. Yo, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's he's aggressive. Um, so there, there's that individual um, skill, you know, relativity or parity of, you know, comparing um, this type of ability to a similar type of ability on each of the classes mm -hmm. to make sure those line up. Mm -hmm. And then we have more of a global um, type of view as well, where we look at, you know, the cost of all the abilities, you know, and like, okay, when I'm, when I'm doing my attacks, you know, I'm going to end up spending this many resources per second um, on the Warden versus this many per second on the Nightblade. Mm -hmm. And then we also factor in, um, oh, I'm re regenerating this many resources per second, you know, with my passive abilities and my active abilities and comparing that. And then we can figure out sort of the drain rate or, you know, how much, how much resources, you know, you're going to be losing per second. Mm -hmm. um, so we look at, you know, that in terms of, you know, the costs and the damage and, you know, like how much single you know single target damage and how much area effect damage we're doing so um yeah we look at quite a few different pieces in a narrow and wide view okay i know um some people are noticing that you're an amazing player and you just don't die <laughs> <laughs> carrie has dev hacks on i do um, <laughs> I, I have two dev hacks i have the no kill and the no cost because we are playing on the on the development yeah. server right now yeah. so we're, so we're allowed just, to cheat i want to just show the abilities without being have to worry yeah. about regeneration yeah. but also she's pretty good at the game too so. she's also really good <laughs> I... um and then um, with with balancing though, um, and a, a key part of that as well is is not just you know how how effective is each ability, mm -hmm. but looking um, comparing one class to another, what does this class do well, and what does this class do not as well? Because if you can't one, be great at everything, right, right. If one <laughs> class, you know, yeah, it's like oh well, I you know, especially with the warden, right? It's like well, I can heal and tank and DPS, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm amazing at all these things, why wouldn't everyone play the warden? Yeah. So the yeah one of the strengths in particular with the warden is the group utility. Um, they're they're really great because they have all these different heal spells. Mm -hmm. You know they have armor buffs for the party and stuff like that. Um, and then in terms of the weaknesses though, they don't have that instant um, type of ability to stun an enemy or stop an enemy from attacking you. Gotcha. Um, okay. And same with executes. Um, we don't have a spammable execute where you can just you know keep doing mm -hmm. right. a lot of damage really quickly to low, low health targets. Um, and we still wanted those capabilities, but we gave them 
you know, sort of a twist on that so that you can get crowd control, but you're not going to be able to instantly do it to mm -hmm. the target when you need to. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a little bit more delayed, and you're going to have to, you know, be really strategic with setting that up at the right time. Um, and then, yeah, similar with the execute is, you know, we have, there is a way you can get an execute, but it's not, you know, quite as reliable and you can't do it, you know, over and over and over again. So there, there's a lot of interesting strategy with the warden class. That makes sense. Okay. So who are you? This is Eric Robel. Okay. <laughs> I see some people, people in chat. Asking, oh. Yeah, they were like, who is that? That's Where were you when we did a draft? <laughs> so, so Eric Robel. I've never been on ESO Live before. Who am I? Who's this guy talking? Uh, Eric Robel is our lead combat designer. Uh, we also have Carrie Day, one of our associate designers who worked on The Warden. Mm -hmm. Also on the combat team. This is Jessica. I'm Gina. Hello. <laughs> nice to see everyone. We're community managers for ESO. Um, and we're showing off the Warden today. We're in Vardenfell, just kind of running around, showing off some of the abilities. In fact, I think it's time to look oh, at yeah. the individual 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 abilities. The what? In depth. Yep. The blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> So let's take a look at the animal companions' skills one at a time here. Can I create a dummy? Uh, well, let's. You want to start with the dive ability? And sure, then we but can I just... need to fire at somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, go ahead. Yeah, then. so more, okay. more death hacks happening. We're um, creating just this random uh, <laughs> Eric Robel, <laughs> who we're gonna beat on a little bit. So. This is our basic bit. testing monster. This is our testing use. monster. You are the testing monster. Yeah, pretty yeah. much any ability when we're looking at damage or we're looking at trying to like line up our effects and stuff like this, we just create we this just guy. Fight. And he just Robo. takes this punishment, takes, takes a time. beating. You can just hit him again and again and again. He just keeps getting up, oh God. just <laughs> like me. Yeah, you can only imagine the things we say in our thought reports. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So um, for anybody who didn't catch it, we had a poll on Twitter where we asked, what skill line would you like us to dive into in depth during today's show? I see what you just show. showed. Oh. <laughs> dive in. Got it. And uh, Animal Companions won the vote. So that's the one we're going to take a look at in depth today. Um, but on our next ESL Live show, we'll take a look at the other two mm -hmm. in just as much depth. So you guys want to take it away? Yeah. yeah. So the basic ability is dive, which is you know, just a standard, you know, you target the enemy, you press it, and it does, it does a bunch of damage. It calls in a cliff racer to mm -hmm. attack them. So you want to show that off? Yeah, definitely First appropriate person. for... Boom. Oh, definitely appropriate for Marlon. You're my bear real quick. <laughs> Who remembers? Oh, bear. sad. Who remembers cliff racers? And if you zoom Long out, memories, yeah. Right? This is yeah. the most nostalgic of all of the abilities. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Games. And he kind of like swoops in over your shoulder, right? And you're like sort of commanding him at the same time. So we got that sort of like sync up of the visual. And there's, there no... were like 50 of them. <laughs> there will be no <laughs> cooldown or anything on it, right? So you can just keep on. Oh, yeah. You just keep, keep on, on throwing there, the birds. There is a minimum travel time um, because okay. we wanted to make sure that it looked like you're calling it from the sky. Yeah. Like the animation is like calling it down. And so we wanted to f make that full feel like, hey, come and hit, you know, Death from dummy. above. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it does have a minimum travel time to it. So it is a little bit slower and, and easier to see. Yeah, and technically, I guess if you got 50 players, you could all have them target someone and then just let the birds <laughs> would... and relive the memory. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you want to talk a little bit, Carrie, about the the audio? Yeah. On this so yeah, because that's pretty. It's it's nostalgic. pretty cool. So like I said before, that it is probably the most nostalgic of all the animal companions mm -hmm. to what you see in Morrowind. Um, it is a cliff racer, so you can see the model is is very similar, and you know it's even pretty scary when it's flying at your face. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> it's terrifying. It's terrifying, but there um, we do have a sound effect that plays that is actually from the original game. Oh, um, that's cool. Our sound awesome. engineer wanted to to pull on those nostalgic strings, but we didn't want it to be overwhelming every time. So you'll it's hear it's kind of high pitched and screechy. <laughs> Right. And since there's no cooldown, you can just keep, you, just you know, casting going. this every single second. You can come in another. So bird. you'll hear it every once in a while. Um, and there's also even one of the morphs, which is called the Screaming Cliff Racer, <laughs> and so um, it actually deals more damage when you are over 15 meters away. If you're over 15 meters, 15, between 15 and 28, which mm -hmm. is its range, you'll do 15% additional damage. So it actually has an extra sound to say, "Hey." I have a full damage getting, opportunity. This boost. is the huge one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other one is the stamina morph. So we have first full range stamina uh, nuke, which is That's pretty exciting. unique. It's pretty, it's pretty unique to yeah. uh, wardens and really great for stamina players. So you can make a lot of cool builds with this because mm -hmm. it you know pairs really well with the bow because you can be shooting ah, the guy with the yeah. bow 
while you're throwing it's a lot of fun. these cliff racers and mm -hmm. everything is scaling with your stamina stats, mm. so you can just max that one out. Um, and we've, we've seen internally, too, people have um, made some really interesting builds where they have this with a melee guy. Yeah, like so a dual wield or... Yeah, yeah, you know. exactly. So you can, you know, be hitting the guy and then he, you know, teleports away from you and you can just keep throwing birds at him no matter where he <laughs> or, is. Or you're in a dungeon <laughs> and you're melee and you're dual wielder or something like that, but then some major area effect happens that could be dealing a lot of damage mm -hmm. to you that's on a boss. And so you can you need to step away, but you're like, well, I'm at a damage loss. So let me throw in some of my, uh, my dive abilities in as I'm coming back in before you go back to your dual wheel, mm -hmm. which is like pretty a really cool. fun one. Jules yeah. was asking if um, you can dodge the cliff racer. You cannot dodge uh, this ability because it does have a minimum travel time and it's very predominantly visual mm -hmm. that it was really easy for people to, to roll dodge away. Yeah, or... it's like, well, you'd never be able to hit because you see like the portal <laughs> come up thing and come. then like you hear the bird call and then he's like Just swooping down. Do you're a like, side step and you're like, like, yeah, I got, nope. I got my, sh yeah, yeah you I got actually, my roll dodge. You, you don't see it as much if it's just you, but you actually see a portal come up where it materializes in and it comes oh. in. So yeah, it's, cool. it's definitely very visual. So it is undodgeable. Yeah. Okay. And so that worked, that worked well from a gameplay feel, but also from a balance perspective and the fact that, you know, you're not dealing the damage quite as quickly. So because of that, you know, you're dealing extra damage in the long run because those people who are dodging, you're going to end up hitting them and dealing damage to them. Yeah. Um, nice. So, Scorch. Yeah. It next up, really the fun. Scorch ability. <laughs> um, so this this will be familiar. I don't I don't know how many people are watching went to PAX, um, but we ended up changing this one a little bit in <laughs> development. Okay. A little bit. It used to be a Hajmoda, so you'd see the turtle shell flying out of people, and now it's shock instead. So do you want to yeah, just sort of cast, cast that for people? people the new the new version. So you fire it, and three seconds later it pops up and go boom. Um. Um, and this deals <laughs> damage to everything in a line in front of you. Yeah, um, and it does like, a lot of damage too. It's it's twenty meters long and seven meters wide. Wow, and it's all in a line. And it's all in a line. Yeah. Wow. So this is great. You can combine it with other abilities so that they're all dealing damage at the same time. You Have know. you guys seen people using this with caltrips? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, funny that you should ask. Caltrips is a stamina based ability. So we actually again have a stamina based morph called mm -hmm. Subterranean Assault, which yeah. actually puts on. Um, Major breach and major fracture, which reduces you know spell and physical resistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but any any sort of snare or slow ability it combines really well with because then the enemies can't really get out of and the way. And then you can line it up and you yeah. keep some sort of packed in there together. Um, and you know potentially other classes are right like the dragon knight does his talons so that everyone's locked in place and then you can line them all up for a really mm. really powerful mm -hmm. shot here. Yeah, and the other um, the other morph is actually deep fissure. So like we said that there's no immediate hard crowd control, but this one is actually whoever's the closest person to the to the line of where you fire it will get stunned. So he'll get knocked down. Oh, okay. Can you back up a little bit and then cast that ability? Somebody was just asking. Yep. Might be a bad... Oh, it was Spees. Area. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Spees! <laughs> Don't actually show Spees is just chilling. <laughs> Going to first person? Yeah, yeah so... Absolutely. And, and part of the, the reason as well that we change it to the, the shulk is that they're a lot more visible and easy to see. Um, this is an ability that you're going to be using a lot. Oh, that's cool. It has the Yeah, so the, the one that effect. stuns, yeah. you'll see yeah. that kind of, you know, ground thing on him. But he's crowd, uh, crowd control immune at the moment, so now he's not. We can do it again. He'll knock down. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Got him. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, so... Go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, uh, okay, yeah, so... Um, yeah, the, the, the nice thing about this is it's, you can tell when it goes off, which is really important because it's a powerful ability and you want to keep doing it again, and we didn't want people to have to constantly keep looking at, you know, their buff trackers or whatever to see when the ability had fired, mm -hmm. um, and the Hajimoto wasn't quite as visible. It was sometimes you are kind of like, hey, did it happen or not? Um, and then, you know, there were... Every now and again, there were like some technical problems where like the turtle, you know, got kind of like scared of a shadow or something, and you know, would just like pop up instantly, and then you Tur know, you turtled. Yeah, it was turtle. <laughs> yeah, then turtle back. Yeah, you got the pun today. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. So the broom and uh, bucket got me in the mood. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun day. So a couple questions, real quick. I know we're kind of going backwards a bit. That's um, fine. Everyone's still recovering from the cliff racer. Can't be dodgeable. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there's yeah we got a there's a lot in this class and, and yeah. definitely people are gonna keep you know exploring so what, what was and trying the question, new builds. So. Um, can it be reflected? Ah. It cannot be reflected. Um, mainly because you 
just the bird wings. Like, can you really change? <laughs> like, can you really reflect the bird? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the counter to this I'm ability, though, a bird bouncing off a shield. <laughs> yeah. But then he like bounces back at the guy, yeah. which is kind of weird because he came in at this arc and then it would be straight. So it's like the physics don't really make sense with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the counter to this ability is blocking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we, yeah, it was it was important to us that every ability does have some counterplay, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. we have a lot of different, you know, offensive and defensive options. So we wanted to line up like, okay, you want to use a different type of thing in a different situation, but depending on depending, depending. That's, that's the word, yeah. <laughs> depending on who you're fighting. The other thing that somebody noticed was um, that your character's legs were actually tracking the ground level, which is another oh, feature yeah. that's coming in. Wow, you guys, you guys are noticing are, this. They're observant. Some eagle eyes <laughs> yeah, today. You can, yes. you can see going up and down. It's 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 pretty cool. And Not you can like yet. stand on like kind of half on a rock maybe. Yeah, a man. little bit. Captain Morgan. Captain Morgan. Captain Morgan. You can see. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. It's definitely it's definitely there. Let me back up a little bit. I mean, I mean, there, there, this was yeah. not rehearsed, by the way. We're just yeah, doing this live. <laughs> you can see that I'm... Yep. So that is oh. a new option that you can turn on or off, I believe. Um, I mean, come I, with I feel like you probably want it on. It's yeah. pretty yeah. cool looking. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. And just to reiterate, the buff trackers that you're seeing, that is coming to console as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, console players like this for everybody. It is mm -hmm. super yep. exciting. Yep. Okay, so moving on to the next skill line. Mm-hmm. Or the next, next skill. Next skill. Or the next skill. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So next one down the line is is swarm. this is swarm. So this is um, another animal that you'll commonly encounter inside of Marwin. It's the fetcher fly. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see oh, hives of, you those. Some of those. Yeah, you'll huh? yeah, yeah, exactly. There's hives. The the golem will summon more hives, and they'll swarm up against you. Yeah, and part of this is we wanted to make this class feel like it was unique to Elder Scrolls and it fit with the story and the lore and all the unique cool creatures and stuff that we have specifically in this game. And it's so, got a lot of Morrowind creatures. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so because it's like, well, you know, we're coming out with Morrowind. It yeah. makes sense that the class, you know, would sort of have that parody. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're pretty happy with how that came out. And the swarm ability is, at its base, it's, it's a, a pretty... Dot. Yeah, it's just, it does damage over time to a target. You know, you just point, mm -hmm. mouse over them, hit them, and it'll do damage over time. But when you morph it, it's got some really interesting things. Really, so parody... really fun morphs. So this is, you know, just I'm just firing real quick so you can see. You can see I. So that's throwing the a swarm. Base and ability. Evil yeah. swarms yeah. like buzzing around you and biting you, which is pretty fun. <laughs> just like um, little there's there's two morphs here. Uh -huh. One is the fetcher infection, um, which I'll, I'll show you guys in a second. Is that essentially we wanted it to grow and to deal more damage, and so you can cast it on one guy and it'll deal. Um, you know, it's normal amount of damage, and then you cast it on the second guy, and it deals 75% more damage. Ooh. Um, so you can actually be really smart with it and deal, you know, normal damage to, you know, an ad that's fighting next to a boss, and then deal the extra more damaging to to the boss itself. So it automatically spreads? Um, no, this you one cast doesn't have. Second doesn't time? Have, yeah. You cast it a second yeah. time. Okay. Um, but the one thing that we really wanted to do to help with with timing. We used to have it so that way you, if you cast it within five seconds of the first one, you get the bonus damage. But mm -hmm. it would always be really, really, you know, not as rewarding if you didn't have your rotation perfectly. Mm -hmm. And so what one thing that we did is that once you cast it, your hands are going to glow green to say, hey, your next cast is going to be um, more damage. You can and actually see some little insect guys like flying around. Flying, yeah, your hands. And, and I'll show that in a second. But... Um, so then you can choose. You can choose, and it's essentially right. permanent. So you could be killing one guy normally, and then go to the next mob oh, in a delve nice. or something like mm -hmm. that. And so it's 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 a lot more fun and and flexible and flexible yeah, player and friendly things like yeah. that. And then and this growing swarm is another one that you cast, but it's actually strategic because normally you want to cast on a full health target, or so, but this one you wanted to go on the weakest one. So that way he has less health, and as soon as either the duration expires or the guy dies, it will spread to six additional targets. Wow. So it really at is a large damage? area damage, yeah. and the same yeah. damage. Um, so it's like seven guys for one cast. But there's a you know a good delay to it. Mm -hmm. um, this one's seen a lot of iteration because it used to just grow and go from one guy to two guys, and then it would go to two more guys. But it just you know was a little bit... Exponential you know, damage. Yeah. Exponential damage. It wasn't yeah. quite rewarding. Yeah, we were worried <laughs> that that was going to cause yeah potential performance issues sure. and balance issues. Yeah. If so, it's like, well, now it can hit eight targets, sixteen, right? And it just keeps going. One hundred. You know. Yeah. So yeah. now we have that feel, but we wanted to. Uh, so instead, it, it grows to six. Right. So okay. I'm going to cast the infection real quick to just show you guys the the arm, and I'll cast it in first person. 
and you can see I throw on the left, and then I have this stuff on my hands, and there's even little, you know, little bats around, or little insects around my hands, and then once I cast it again, it'll go away. The one thing that's really cool, though, is that if you uh, look at the animations themselves, the first cast is left-handed, and the second cast is right-handed. Oh, yeah. So, so they can both be cast on the same person, They right? can be cast on the same person. Okay. It will refresh it. Um, yeah, so you can only have that dot on one target. So that's that's where kind of the strategic use comes yeah, out. So because yeah. to maximize your damage on a single target, you know, you would cast it and then wait for it to deal all the damage and expire and then and recast then it. Or you could just keep full. it on the same guy and wait for the duration to expire and then the second cast, you deal 75% more. Right. Okay. Um, which yeah, is so one one. Depending on what you're trying to do, or like maybe there's just one single guy you're fighting at a time, so you actually want to cast it twice in a row. So you can get those really big ticks of damage, you know, and then you can like line that up with the Hajmoda and the Cliff Racer, so all that stuff's hitting them at the same time to deal a really big, devastating blow. Mm -hmm. I could see that being different for like a boss fight versus mm -hmm. yeah. you're running around solo and you have a group of small mobs. There's a lot of interesting play for both of these uh, abilities in both, you know, solo play and group play. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. And what ability was up next? Do we have any questions, actually? That we should um, I mean, they're all delayed to... a little bit, so <laughs> okay. Okay. we can keep going. I'm just going to keep interrupting every once okay, in a while. Okay, the <laughs> next ability, I think, is one of my personal favorites. It's That's a fun ability. It's pretty fun. It's a cute, adorable, tiny Betty Netch. Mm -hmm. And um, you summon it, and it restores magicka or stamina over time. Um, and we can watch it right here. It doesn't actually cost anything, because there was a good amount of <laughs> iteration feedback, but you can see that you cast it, your hand is actually pulling it up, and as it's pulling up, the Minetch itself pulls up, which is yeah. another showcase of how really great the our animation team yeah, they really, got really everything matched with what we were trying to accomplish. Polished and together, yep. Cool. How does this look different than the Netch pets that follow you around? Um, there. It's, I mean, it is, yeah, it is kind of similar. So you could actually have both at the same time, but you have this blue beam okay. yeah, the that's models like very are obvious. Yeah, yeah, the models are super it's similar. I would pull it up, but it, my collection menu has full of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> full of goodies. Yeah. It's well, fine. Goodies. I know people but were no, asking, like, what? Can I even have both You out? can have yeah, both yeah, out. Exactly. And it's actually so, yeah. really fun. Um, one of our animators who actually did this ability, she would run around with her own niche and, and cast this one all the time. And Big have niche fan. A yeah. niche, a niche yeah. family just following her around, which is a lot of fun. So the Netch restores Magica. Magica. Magica over time. Yeah. So you can one of the morphs though. Yeah, is if you're a stamina player, you can get the stamina morph. Okay, um, cool. And then you also gain uh, major sorcery. So like I said before, there's a little bit of a blending there. So there is buff categories to this. It originally was where you summon this monster and people could could kill it. They could interrupt it. They could bash it. But commonly, we often heard each other screaming like. Rob! You're Betty Netch with my meteor instead of you. <laughs> and so. Um, it was a good damage shield, but it was a little too good <laughs> of a damage shield. It was too good shield. that it would just steal attacks. So ah. we made it um, untargetable both to, you know, be able to calculate the balance better for the restore itself mm -hmm. and also make it more rewarding. Yeah, we did talk about like. Oh, maybe this is interesting because people can interrupt this, but then, you know, maybe it's really powerful. So we'll, you know, increase the amount of resources it gives mm -hmm. to sort of counteract that. But there's some issues is like, well, monsters aren't going to be smart enough to interrupt your betting edge. So in, in PvE combat, resources. it's going to be, right. yeah, you're going to have way more resources than everyone else. And then if you're fighting against someone who's really good in PvP, then you're not going to have any resources at all because they're going to keep bashing it right. and they're going to run you dry. Well, so it's good that you guys thought about that. Yeah. So and what are the different morphs? Um, so one is the blue Betty. Blue Betty. Blue Betty. Oh. And he actually will remove Family. one negative effect. <laughs> <laughs> one someone was gonna someone say Someone had to do it. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. End stream. He'll remove one negative effect on you when you mm -hmm. when you activate it. So it is a little bit of a cleanse. Um, and that's to sort of you know get you potentially using the ability in a different way is mm -hmm. what we did yeah. with a lot of the morphs. So you're like, well. You know, I still have, it's going to be giving me magic back for another 10 seconds, but I want to get rid of this debuff, so I'm going to activate it right now. I'm going to cleanse myself up, and then, you know, now I'll have it keep going for the next 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is the Bull Netch, which is a, a green Betty Netch with a green beam, which I'll cast right here, because he's pretty cool. Um, I actually think he might even be the same model as the Vanity Pet, but uh, he restores stamina and gives you major savagery. That's great. Yeah, and, wow. he, and it doesn't have a cost, too, so... Or major brutality. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, p potentially you could, you know, as a Magicka build, maybe you want to have extra stamina so that you can do more, you, you know, could... roll dodging or more blocking oh, yeah. or something like that. So, um, 
because that he doesn't have a cost now, there's a lot more flexibility in what type of build you yeah. want to put him and in. And we also removed the cost because players commonly wanted to get activate the restore ability, but they were at too low of magicka or stamina to even cast the ability. Yeah. So, so then they didn't have enough magicka to get their magicka back, so it's kind of, you know, a catch-22 there. So, yeah, we decided to just take off the cost, but then reduce the restore by a little bit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. sort of. I could see that one being really popular with any type of build. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's a, it's, and it's just super cute to see it spinning up as mm -hmm. it as a cast. And dancing around a little it bit. It just dances Like it does now. Look at that. <laughs> and just like. Who doesn't love that? Um, so um, are these considered summoned pets? The... Mm. Um, Betty Netch and the bear are, mm -hmm. um, in terms of how item sets that you know work when you summon a pet and things like that. So, you know, the item sets like Necropotence will work with the Betty Netch. That's exactly why people were awesome. asking. Yep, uh -huh. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Wow, they're sharp. I know. <laughs> um, all of these abilities that you've been showing off, especially with the pets coming out, will they pull you out of cloak or stealth? Um, the they they will not. We did we do have it so that way if you are stealthed, your Betty Natch is stealthed with you and, nice. and, and things like he that. He doesn't give away your position. It took us oh, a that's we great. didn't initially, it took some time. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have that tech in at first. But it's so, good that you thought of that. Yeah, yeah, we were like in battlegrounds and I was like casting the Betty Natch. I was like, Oh, I bet no one's gonna see me <laughs> and then they just ran right there and Well it's like, also really you know. tough because you could be in the stealth and then you just see this giant beam for the Betty Natch be like, He's right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like a big neon here I am sign. Yes. <laughs> yep. So, oh, yep. gosh. It, it will not break you from uh, stealth if you cast it. Especially because the Betty Natch itself is like a self buff. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's generally the, the paradigm we use for abilities in general is if it's an offensive sort of attack ability, it will pull you out of stealth. So the scorch ability does. It will. Because we didn't want you to be able to line up this crazy amount of burst damage out of stealth, and then the enemy wouldn't be able to see it and had no way to counter <laughs> right. it. So as yeah. soon as you press that button, they'll be able to see you. That makes sense. Okay, um, so what's the next one? The next one is called Falcon Swiftness. So this is like a self buff ability. You cast it and you gain major expedition, you gain um, major endurance, and then there's more that give you berserk or evasion i feel like we've seen this one in some of the videos yeah it is pretty it's, cool it's one that we like to show off because visuals ended up turning out really well yeah, we have we have some new uh new visual effects oh, that toys nice, that we're yeah. really kind of trying to show off here with like disintegrating like the wings in oh yeah it, it, i just yeah, love looking at this one it's super cool like just and we did go through some interesting iteration in the design phase mm -hmm. of trying to figure out what this would look like um we had initially it was going to summon, you know, like a deer or a stag to, to give you these totally bonuses. Totally a falcon. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah, no, so we're, we're, we're figuring out, like, the right animal to do it, right? Yeah. And it was sort of hard to tell a story that made sense with a deer, because it's mm. like, like, the deer comes out, and it's like, it's going to, like, dance around you, and then you get the buff, or, like, you do you, like, ride it? And you'll call it Prancer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So or Bambi. The, Maybe your bear the wings were like a very clear, easy to say, like, oh, okay, this is giving me the movement yeah. speed and like, yeah. you know, birds so, are fast. So this is like definitely you more harnessing the animals in the area as opposed mm -hmm. to calling upon them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, so these these are pretty much, you know, self buff Sometimes the, you know, Morse will show extra visual lines to show, hey, I have expedition, which makes me feel really fast, a lot mm -hmm. faster. Because yeah, speed lines always make you faster. Make like on every car, so you see that on a minivan, you yeah. know it's got some pickup. <laughs> So what's the difference between the two morphs real quick? Um, one gives you uh, minor evasion and one gives you minor berserk. Got it. Okay. Um, so they, they add a third buff to two of those. Awesome. Yeah, so different abilities, you're sort of making different decisions with the morphs of like, you know, do I want an AO... your play style, yeah. Yeah, or yeah. do I want to hit a lot, of, a lot of targets in an area or do I want to hit one target really hard, right? Mm -hmm. That's the swarm. And this one is like, oh, do I want more of the offensive or the defensive type and of And this morph. is another one of those that could really intermingle like... You know, do I want to do more damage, or do I want to, you know, dodge more? Do I want to, you know, right. evade more damage? Yeah. So as a tank, you might actually want to get the evasion Bird of Prey mm -hmm. so that you're taking less damage. Okay. So last up is the one that everybody has seen in, in <laughs> the bear <laughs> cinematic trailer and yeah. in our videos. Mm -hmm. um, that is the bear. That's what it's called, the bear. It's just the, the bear. bear. The bear. <laughs> just kidding. It's feral guardian. Nobody's laughing except for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure they're all laughing at home. We just can't. They're just they're doing the thing where they type LOL, but they're not actually laughing. <laughs> they're, just, they're just shaking their heads at us. <laughs> yeah, so so this is my fun bear right here. Um, there's been a lot of time spent into this pet. Yeah, like what would you say, like percentage of your time? You know, the different abilities. I this is probably the most time intensive 
of all the abilities for our, the Warren class, and mm -hmm. a lot of things that we try to do is um, improve on a lot of you know pet behavior that we liked or didn't like. Um, Speaking of things. time, change the time of day so they can see it better. Oh, oh, oh good idea. Yeah. Yep. Hold on, we're we're making it brighter. And this is the gray bear go. that you get yeah. from the yeah. discovery pack, so right? So this is the discovery uh, pack bear. We can actually change the skin to to brown in your collections menu, like you would put on a costume or mm -hmm. a hat, mm -hmm. um, or various things like that. And the discovery pack, you get that from pre-ordering Morrowind. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> nudge, nudge. I'm just, gosh, yeah. forget so it. So if, like, <laughs> if you like the gray bear, I can I actually, I actually could do it right now, and you can see, bam, he is a brown Ooh, bear. That's what the brown sparkly. Looks like. Yeah. Cool. So, so if you have both, that's just how you switch it? Yeah, you just go into your collections menu, click and unclick it, and oh, he changes, which is great, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so some things that are, are kind of interesting about the, the bear is that, first of all, casting and summoning this bear doesn't cost anything. Woo, free that's ultimate. Awesome. Free ultimate. <laughs> Um, one thing that we found is that the bear originally cost 200 for the ultimate, similar to some of our higher mm -hmm. end ultimates, but you summon him and you die. And then you're like, well, that's a waste of an ultimate. Uh, and then yeah. you have to like gain another 250 to summon him again. And so we really wanted him to be your fighting companion and be mm -hmm. at your side. Um, so we decided that instead of it costing ultimate, the cost of summoning him is actually the cast time of the ability. Mm -hmm. So it, it takes a good amount of time to, to bring him up. So instead of dealing more damage, you instead have to focus on summoning him, which is about two and a half seconds long. Yeah, it's like longer than any other ability yeah. to, to cast um, a spare. So. so maybe you want to do it before a fight or something like that. Mm -hmm. Not if like, hey, I this crazy thing's about to happen in this boss fight. Hold on, let me wait two and a half seconds and summon this mm -hmm. bear. So there's the, there's the opportunity cost loss with that one. Um, and then because it doesn't cost anything, we still want ultimate cost to exist on the ability. Because otherwise you're building up ultimate and you can't do anything with it. <laughs> yeah, right. so, so the bear itself has uh, a good number of the classic bear abilities. You can see right now he has this you know, normal bite and then this is the slam. Oh. It'll actually knock Purple. people down Purple. and it'll rotate Aww. between. No, 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 he gets back up, it's fine. He'll get back up, he'll get knocked down again. Um, wasn't there a song like that? <laughs> that yes. Oh. But where's our audio guy? Oh. Well, bam. Yeah. So these these are the two effectively, you know. Should auto I put on the bucket the and then each has. time the bear, you could just <laughs> so a bite and a swipe. A basically. bite and then a slam. Mm -hmm. And then there's actually a little kind of like a medium attack, and that medium attack is a special. Hold on. Let me let me do. No. So that way I don't have to you know gain ultimate every time. Um, is that he'll do a medium swipe. You, you see him rear up halfway, and you'll see both hands kind of go and fight it. It's over here. And there then, it goes, yep. And then the really cool thing is that it's actually the class execute. So we wanted okay. to give it rewarding for unique play, cost 75 ultimate. And so if he, um, if your target's below 25% health, it'll deal double the damage mm -hmm. for this particular attack. And it's it's sort of cheap enough to since it's only seventy five ultimate, um, you can you know if you're fighting a long battle against a boss or something, you can activate it at the beginning of the fight to get some good damage in, and then towards the end of the fight when he gets low health, you can activate it again for mm -hmm. a really big chunk of damage. So it makes this ultimate feel a little bit more active. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if it was just you know a bear and you just press it once to summon and then you never you know use it again, it's it's not very interactive and it's like well I feel like I almost gave up a slot and I can't really do anything with it and. You sort of see that same design philosophy in the sorcerer pets now. How you know they have the activated abilities to you know heal your allies or, or heal yourself or you know do some do some bonus damage to high health targets. So I imagine um, since it's what am I trying to say here? Um, we, I imagine a lot of people are probably going to have the bear out mm -hmm. pretty frequently, if not all the time. So mm -hmm. yeah, did you sort of balance this ability? around it always being up uh for their for their damage yeah yeah, yeah pretty much i mean we we take in, into the account like the bear sort of is is higher damage than some of the other ultimates because there's that persistent threat of like oh it might die mm -hmm. you know and like so it's not going to be doing some attacks some of the and time it's or traveling I'm to, and yeah i'm gonna have to resummon it yeah it's it's running over to the target so it's not doing anything so mm -hmm. it can be you can't be stunned you, you know you can't be rooted those types of things um but it was it was balanced considering like how much time would it take to to get enough ultimate to cast 
you know, another ultimate from another class, mm -hmm. and how much damage would it do? And so over that period of time, how is the damage of the bear comparable? So mm -hmm. we did try to make them um, really similar over a large frame of time for fighting. And then one one last thing to, to talk about with the bear is the targeting of it. Um, we wanted the bear to be a little bit, you know, wild and, and savage beast, but we wanted you to have a little bit more control over it than you do pets in the game right now. Um, so we came up with this really cool thing. Um, you want to show them carry there? Yeah, so one thing that we did is we wanted to be able for it to be more adaptive to what you were doing. So we decided to build into your fully charged heavy attacks having the bear itself change targets. Mm. So mm -hmm. right now I'm showcasing two you know, targets that are kind of spaced apart. And then once I fully charge heavy attack with the bow, you can see that the bear actually will finish his current attack and, and change targets, which is actually really cool because you're like, where did my bear go? And you can just fully charge heavy attack and, and see him jump right back into the fight. Yeah, and that sort of communicates that feel of like you guys are sort of a team and you're like working together. So you can be like, hey, let's go get this guy. Oh, let's, let's go get that guy. Now, do you need the bear ultimate on both your ability bars if you want it to stay you, up? You mm -hmm. do. If you don't have it on the other bar, then he will, you know, on some. Aww. So you do need it on both bars. And part of, that was part in, in reason for balance, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you have this thing persistently all the time that does really good damage, and then you're also, you know, able to, like, throw meteors on the guy yeah. while the bear is We don't want you him, to right? cast it's, two ultimates at one yeah. time. Right. Um, and then other, other concerns that people have or that we wanted to improve upon for pets is um, one really cool thing is that your bear actually gets all your offensive bonuses. So if you oh, that's great. cast, you know, your your you know your niche mm -hmm. and you get, you know, major brutality, major sorcery, those sorts of things, your bear will do more damage. Your your bear actually will scale with the amount of points that you spend in your champion system and those types of things, which is really, really cool. Um, and then one of the other quality of life improvements for him is that when you zone through a new place, like you're doing, you know, Maelstrom Arena, or you're in a dungeon, you go through a door, or go into a delve in a zone, um, he'll resummon himself because it's commonly you're in a dungeon and you forget that you went through into a new, new location and your your animals are gone. Or you're just adventuring, you go into yeah, a you're delve. adventuring, mm -hmm. and so he he will actually remember and come back, um, which is also true for the sorcerer pets. Yeah, so we awesome. we made That's this tech Morrowind. for the bear, mm -hmm. yeah, and then with this update, yeah, now everyone gets it with with all their pets so that was that was an awesome little bonus we got for everyone that is great. That. are cool. there any other questions or anything um well one thing i did want to do was a giveaway um, <laughs> oh, and yeah. maybe while we do that we can show off the passives yeah if you want sure Definitely. so um we're going to be giving away a crown pack yep. today that way you can get the bucket and broom or mm. whatever else oh, you yeah. might like out of the crown you store. get a lot of buckets <laughs> we'll do, yeah, we'll do a 1500 yep. crown pack giveaway. So if you'd like to win for the platform of your choice, we'll do Warden as the <laughs> Oh, yes, clever. It's the Warden wow. show, all lowercase, Warden. Um, so you can go ahead and type that into chat if you'd like to try and win a 1500 crown pack. And in the meantime, Carrie will Go talk about passives. passives. Cool. Yeah. Um, so the first passive is, is pretty cool. It's that um, once. When one of your animal companions is killed or summoned, you actually are restored health, which is pretty cool because we consider every single one of these animals as um, a pet. So as soon as you hit with dive and he goes away, he's unsummoned, so you restore health, Ooh, which is really kind of cool. That is nice. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you know, when swarm once your swarm expires and goes away, you'll heal, and when your mm -hmm. you know bear dies, you'll you'll heal and things like that. And that's just for the warden. That is just for the warden, and it's yep. only for the animal companions. Okay. So it's only for the abilities on the skill line. And, and there's, yeah, so there's some really cool combinations with the different abilities. Like if you have the swarm that spreads to multiple different targets, it'll, it'll you know, spread up to six targets. And then when it'll those targets die, six times. Yeah, times. then you get six, six heals from that, oh. plus the heal from the first target. So that is um, nice. there's, yeah. there's a lot of really cool things. It's that, definitely one of those things that has been really, really nice when playing through Maelstrom is like, oh, man, I'm about to die. Do I heal myself or do I just continue to, you know, do damage. deal, deal yeah. damage from the skill line and, and I can live through it, which is really kind of nice. And there's some interesting strategic choices of like, yeah. Well, do I like finish off this target because then I'll get the heal, or do I let the dot keep ticking on this guy and yeah. focus fire on another guy? And, and the, what about the next one? The next one, Savage Beast. Um, this is actually pretty consistent with all of the other 
um, classes. All classes kind of have an ultimate re regeneration mm -hmm. built into their passives. So this is the, the case for the warden. So is when you deal damage with an animal companion ability, you'll gain four ultimate and it has a cooldown of every eight seconds. Okay. And if anyone's wondering why everyone's spamming Warden in chat, we're doing a giveaway <laughs> for a 1500 crown pack. Um, so just type in Warden, all lowercase, and you'll be entered to win. Um, next passive. Yeah, next passive. So this one is Flourish. So what happens is you actually increase your Magicka and Stamina Recovery by 12% for each um, Animal Companion ability slotted. Well, I think it's, it's only, you only get that bonus once, right? No, I think it stacks. This is by 12% if an animal can be slotted. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Because otilwise you could have otherwise, six abilities have slotted you're and right. you'd have like oh, yeah. ridiculous. Silly, it goes up to 12%. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> so 12% total. 12% total. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and then this one is increasing your damage um, for each ability slotted by 2% up to a total of 12%. Yeah, so that's kind of what you were talking about. Yeah, that's about, what I was like, talking about. Okay, okay, the more you focus on animal companions, the more so, like, damage you get. Because I'm all animal companion abilities on my bar right now, I have the most bonus damage associated to those Yeah, skills. so it's sort of, depending on your play style, if you only want, you only like one of these abilities, you can get a nice bonus, or mm -hmm. if you want all of them, you know, then you can max out the last bonus. Awesome. Great. Well, we're going to choose our winner for a 1500 crown pack. Who won? Let's it see. is Relentless Glaren. Oh, Congrats, Relentless man. Glaren. Hope How many times he's relentless? How many times did he type Warden in the chat? <laughs> yeah, right. He's like, give me the packs. I just give me those away. fifteen hundred crowns. Uh, before we wrap up, um, we actually forgot to show the morphs for the bear. Oh, mm. yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We'll show that to you real quick before we um, before so we leave. So the bear has two morphs. Uh, one is the Eternal Guardian. Um, he will actually respawn if he dies with for free cast, so you don't have to spend the two and a half seconds to, mm -hmm. to summon him. Um, and that does have a 60 second cooldown, so you get a free cast once, and if he dies in that 60 seconds, you would have to manually recast him. And we, we took advantage of the new buff tracker tech with this, so you'll actually see the little 60 second yeah. timer counting down, so you'll know. Um, and he looks visually distinct from the other bear. Mm -hmm. So you, so if someone's fighting against that bear and you see... He has glowing eyes. Yeah, okay. so you see the glowing eye bear, that means you know when you kill him, he's going to come right back. Yeah, and then um, one thing that's actually really cool that I didn't talk about is we built kind of it into the ability bar. So when your bear is out, you actually have a different icon in your ultimate slot. So you're like, oh, is my bear alive or dead? You see the, the paw print if he's alive, but then if he is gone, you'll see the bear icon associated to that morph. Um, and then the last one is actually the stamina morph. So it, it deals physical damage so that will scale based on your champion points. Um, I mean, they, all ultimates scale on your highest stat, but by damage type if you use champion points or things like that. And that's particularly is, important now because the bear is scaling off the bonuses that you have on your character. So if you have increased physical right. damage, it won't increase the other bear, but it'll increase this one since it's looking yeah. at and specifically you can see, what you, you have. And you can see this bear right here. You can see that he does have a a shoulder patch oh, tattoo yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. and the center inside of the shoulder patch is actually the class icon so this yeah the, top the paw the class yeah when icon. you go to create a, a new warden you'll see that icon um, yeah. so this is the, awesome. the class sigil you'll see it in another ability uh next eso live and he also has his war paint on his nose oh, mm -hmm. yeah that was really running away I hey, come back don't, here. don't show my face <laughs> <laughs> he's a little bashful no, um so yeah so those are the more so so one so the wild guardians typically deal more damage and their physical damage base and the eternal guardian is um the resurrection when he dies okay great Gosh, well, thank you guys so much. Do we have time for any questions? If not, we can always... I think, I think that's a good place to wrap up. Okay. Um, I know everyone's asking, well, what about the other two skill lines? <laughs> we will be showing that on the next show, which is April 14th. Yep, and we'll go as, as much in-depth as we did this time, going through each ability and each morph. So make sure you tune in then, April 14th. It's going to be another loaded show. And you'll see these with, wonderful with faces again, right? We'll all be back yeah. again in two weeks. So thank you guys so much for joining us for this show. We hope you enjoyed it. Please let us know what you thought um, about the show about the animal companion skill line mm -hmm. and if there's any information about any you know they want to know more warden mm -hmm. specific stuff we can go into that yep and don't forget next week we're celebrating our three-year anniversary for launching ESO originally back in 2014 wow. so if you have any awesome. screenshots or videos or anything memories you want to share from the first time we launched just post them up we'd love to read it and thanks so much for joining us and have a great weekend everybody bye, yeah, bye. see you guys <laughs>